Hi, my name is Jen, and I'd like to thank you for watching um, the joint venture uh, video here at well, Oak Leaf Surgical Hospital website. Um, we'd like to thank you for choosing Oak Leaf Surgical Hospital and hope that your surgery and stay with us exceeds your expectations. This video will be roughly an hour long. Um, it's very, very beneficial to helping you prepare for your procedure, and I highly encourage you to watch it in, at its entire length and also um, view the um, videos that we refer to during the, the class. If you have any questions, I encourage you to jot them down, and I'll be giving you some references and phone numbers you can call um, throughout the class um, to answer those questions for you. Oakley Surgical Hospital is a physician-owned surgical specialty hospital. We have 30 overnight rooms, and all rooms are private. Over 640 patients have joint surgery here each year. Our goal here at Oakleaf is to give you individualized care of the highest quality and service. An additional goal we strive through this video is to provide you with the information about your joint surgery so that you have a better understanding and are more familiar with what you will be experiencing during your stay with us. Like I said, we welcome any questions. Um, being that you are watching this video at home, please jot your questions down and ask uh, upon one of your phone calls or you can call our case management department and I'll give you that number in a bit. So as I said, each one of you has received a joint venture binder tote at home. Um, in that tote, the green bag, you have received a um, specific information and protocol sheet that is in the front of your binder, a complimentary blanket, and a start clean cleansing kit. I'll be going through the binder with you during the class today. Uh, some of the slides do reference to where, find where you can find information in your binder. Um, I don't encourage you to try and go step for step through the binder while I'm teaching the class as things don't quite follow through right, but I highly encourage you to read the binder after you are done watching the video and uh, have your family and friends watch it too that'll be helping take care of you. Um, please notice that in front of that binder there's a specific information and protocol sheet from your surgeon that has been added um, regarding your surgery. Please, please re reference that information sheet for restrictions that are specific to your surgery. We'll also be going through the Start Clean Cleansing Kit during class. There's also a joint venture video on our Oak Leaf website. We created this video to help you understand what exercises and expectations you'll have after surgery. Um, on the video, there is exercises that you'll be doing after surgery. It also shows you how to get in and out of bed, walking with a walker and crutches, um, how to walk up and down stairs, how to get on and off the toilet shower equipment, and getting in and out of a car. You can view the video um, at our Oakleaf website, which is oakleafsurgical.com. There is a blue sheet in the front of your binder that will direct you to that website also if you do not catch that. We highly encourage you and your family members and whoever's gonna be caring for you to watch those videos also as they will be beneficial after your surgery. There is also a video um, on our Oakleaf webpage that shows how to change a hip dressing and a knee dressing, and how to apply compression socks using an assistive device. Um, we'll be reviewing this during class. We will also be going through all this information at, during your stay here after surgery. Today's presentation, we are going to be covering general information. Um, if you're having hip surgery, please reference the information sheets in the front of your binder. Um, each physician has a specific um, reference information sheet. If you have questions, please jot them down and refer either to your physician or ask our case management um, staff when they call um, prior to your procedure. Today's agenda, we will be covering the following information, preparing for your surgery, what to expect during your hospital stay, and caring for yourself at home. So preparing yourself for surgery. Before um, you are able to even set your surgery, you are going to be having a visit with your home doctor, your primary physician. Um, during that visit with them, you're going to be discussing your history and physical. And they're going to discuss any medications you take, whether they are over-the-counter, herbal, prescription. Um, and they're also going to discuss with you what medications you need to stop taking before surgery. Examples of medications you would need to stop would be anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen, Aleve, um, if you're on a blood thinner, aspirin, Coumadin, Plavix, um, your physician will let you know which medicines to stop taking. They may also instruct you how to take your blood pressure medications or your diabetic medications the morning of surgery. So take note of that and um, have that handy for the day of surgery. <clears throat> um, flu shots, 
If you are going to be getting a flu shot, our surgeons recommend two weeks prior to surgery, um, so just keep that in mind. If you do develop flu-like symptoms, um, if you feel sick or have a fever, runny nose, cough, ache, headaches, sore throat a couple days before surgery, please contact your surgeon. If you've been on any antibiotics 10 to 14 days before surgery, um, let your surgeon know also. Studies have shown that antibiotics change the bacterial types in your GI system and on your skin and can increase your risk for infection. Call your surgeon's office if you've been on any antibiotics to, re to discuss if you need to reschedule your surgery with them. If you have any open areas or rashes, especially near the surgical site, you also need to let your surgeon know as soon as possible as it could be an increased risk for infection after surgery. Different things with your lifestyle. Um, if you are a smoker, we highly encourage you to either reduce the amount of smoking or try to quit smoking before surgery. It is uh, proven that nicotine causes vasoconstriction, which reduces your blood supply and reduces your healing capacity. Um, reducing smoking will improve healing and reduce complications. We do have nicotine patches available here. I also want to point out that Oakleaf is also a smoke-free hospital, um, so there is no um, smoking allowed after surgery here. Um, following your doctor's recommendations for exercises prior to surgery is highly recommended. Um, especially not overdoing it, um, trying to get the lawn mowed, um, driveway shoveled, anything like that. Schedule any routine dental work at least four weeks prior to your surgery. Um, the American Dental Association and American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons recommends antibiotics for any dental care after your surgery. Uh, so you'll need to check with your surgeon for routine dental care after you have your joint replacement because you most likely will need to have an antibiotic the day of or the day before you go to have your dental work done, and that includes routine dental cleaning. If you need to have any dental work done prior to your surgery, try and have it taken care of right away. Um, if it's something that is gonna be within a couple weeks prior to your surgery, please discuss with your surgeon if um, it, it's okay to have that done. <clears throat> if you have a metal allergy, including nickel, make sure you let your surgeon know as soon as possible. Our joint replacements are made of metal, and if you do have an allergy to um, any type of metal or nickel, you may need to have additional testing done, and that testing can take three to four weeks um, to complete. So it could postpone your surgery. Most people know if they have an allergy at this point, um, whether it be from jewelry, watches, something. You'll be receiving multiple phone calls prior to surgery. The first one most likely will be from the pre-op um, nurse here at Oakleaf. They'll be calling approximately three weeks before surgery. They're gonna discuss with you your health history, answer any further questions or concerns you have. They'll also be giving you a arrival time, um, when you should be here for your surgery at that time um, during that phone call. Please note that this time can change, especially if they're calling three weeks out. They might call you before your surgery to either tell you to come earlier or later. Um, typically, we have you arrive two to three hours prior to surgery. Um, They'll also be telling you when to stop eating and drinking the night before. So make sure you jot that information down as it might be a couple weeks before surgery and you wanna remember that. If you have any allergies, the nurse will also be discussing your allergies, whether they're food allergies, medication allergies, seasonal allergies, just so we know um, beforehand what, what you have going on. They'll also discuss your health history with you. Examples they're gonna ask questions of is if you have blood pressure, if you smoke, if you drink, if you're diabetic, if you have any back or neck problems, if you wear a sleep machine at night. Um, also, if you have an advanced directive, please bring that to the hospital here with you. If you do not have an advanced directive and it's something that you would like to fill out, we do have them available here at Oakleaf and just let the pre-op nurse know when you get to the hospital the day of surgery. You'll also be receiving a phone call from one of our pharmacists here at Oakleaf. During that phone call, they're gonna discuss and review any med medications you take at home, whether it be over-the-counter, herbal, or prescription medications. You'll wanna have the medication list or your medication bottles handy so you can tell them the exact name, dose, strength, and how you take the medication at home. We do not need you to bring your medications into the hospital with you unless if the pharmacist specifically tells you you would need to. On a very rare occasion, it may be something that we do not supply here at Oakleaf, and we would have um, you then bring your medication in. 
The last phone call you'll be receiving is from a case manager or discharge planner here at Oak Leaf Hospital. They will be going through a set of questions, some of them maybe even similar to what you've already answered or things that we've discussed today um, regarding your discharge planning needs. They'll also answer any further questions you have. Um, their number, if you do have questions after watching this video, is 715-895-9561 or 715-895-9564. So things you can prepare at home for your surgery. One thing is making sure you have a comfortable chair. You're gonna want a chair that is not too deep or too soft. Some recliner chairs you can really sink into. Pretty much if it's a chair that is uncomfortable for you or hard to get out of now before surgery, it's not gonna be the best chair to get out of after surgery either. Um, you want a chair that's high enough so that your hips are not lower than your knees. Your feet preferably should be flat on the, on the ground. It'll make it a little bit easier to get up. Um, Armrests will be helpful to get in and out of the chair. Um, some, I have had some patients who have taken two by fours or even pallets and put them underneath their recliner to raise them up a little to make it a little bit easier to get out of after surgery. You don't have to go out and purchase a whole new chair. Um, other things you wanna maybe consider is main floor sleeping. Um, you may have a day at when you get home that it's just hard to get up and down those stairs and maybe you need to rest and take a nap before you attempt getting up those up those stairs. So having an area on your in your house where you have a bathroom, kitchen, everything you need available to you that could be an option if you need to sleep there um, for that evening. Making meals ahead of time, especially if you are the cook in the house. Um, you want to maybe make meals ahead of time, put them in the freezer, have them ready for you. There's also a list of meal service options located on page 40 of your handbook um, if you need assistance with that. If you have any rugs or extension cords, we highly encourage you to pick them up and just kind of get them out of your way. Um, you're going to be using a walker or crutches and we don't want you to have any tripping hazards um, on the floor as you're walking around your house. Things to consider in your bathroom, um, maybe considering grab bars in your shower or tub for support as you get in and out of the shower or tub. Um, also consider installing a handheld shower head. It would make it a lot easier, especially right after surgery when you initially start taking your showers, to be able to bathe appropriately. Um, if you have a 90 degree bending restriction, you're gonna need a commode chair or have an elevated toilet seat um, to raise the height of your toilet. Um, the height is different for every person. So when you go home or when you go to your bathroom today, just take a look at you know how, when you're sitting on your toilet, where your knees are in relation to your hips, especially if you're having hip surgery, or how hard and easy it is to get off the toilet now. We do have some recommendations for toilet seat risers. You can get them either online or at your local pharmacy. Pretty much everybody carries them. Um, there's two different types, and I do have examples here. The first one has two like handrails on it to help you get in on and off the toilet easier. It also does screw to the top of your toilet so it's easy to come on and off. Um, this is for somebody who maybe doesn't have a countertop or a grab bar right next to their toilet just to make it a little bit easier to get up and down after surgery. The second one would be for somebody who potentially has something close to the toilet such as a countertop or already has a grab bar next to the toilet um, that you can use to stand up and this one just screws onto the top of the lid of the toilet. Other options I've had patients use, um, they have maybe know somebody who's had a commode and they take the bucket out of the bottom and just set it right over the top of the toilet. Um, consider borrowing or purchasing these prior to surgery, um, just so you know that they work for you and with your equipment at home. Um, Showering will be discussed later and it'll be upon your physician's recommendations. We highly encourage you to um, maybe prepare yourself by buying some bag baths or um, bag shampoos prior to your surgery because there will be a couple days um, where you cannot take a shower and you'll have to wash up at the sink or use a bag bath or bag um, shampoo. <clears throat> So one thing we also discuss in this class is preparing yourself for discharge. Um, we literally want you to start thinking about going home now. I mean, this is literally us preparing you to have the best opportunity for your surgery afterwards. You're gonna wanna arrange for transportation. You're gonna need someone to drive you to and from your physical therapy sessions, follow-up appointments. If you need lab draws, they're gonna need to drive, drive you to lab draws. Um, so consider, you know, you're gonna need somebody to drive you around. Um, we do have handicap permits available here at the hospital. We can give them to you at the time of discharge or after your surgery. Um, you will need to finish filling the form out and then you can either mail it to 
Madison uh, to the DMV, and I believe it's $6 if you mail it to Madison. Otherwise, you can take it just to the local DMV, and I think it's maybe only $9 there. The price sometimes changes. All right, other things you want to consider for transportation home is having pillows in your car. Um, you may wish to have a couple pillows to sit on, especially if you're having hip surgery. It might make it a little bit more comfortable for you. Or if you have a long ride home and you're having knee, knee surgery, you might want to have sit in the back seat of your car. So you might want to have a pillow for behind your back or just for comfort for your ride home. You're also going to want to consider having somebody to help you at home for the first four to seven days after surgery. Um, you may need help getting in and out of bed taking your shower, getting in and out of your chair, especially if it's been a long day. Maybe grabbing you some medication if you need something or refilling your ice machine. Um, we, we recommend for at least the first four to seven days, but it really is depend, dependent on your prior health and confidence after surgery. If you know you need assistance, um, definitely talk with the RN at the time of the pre-op call and the case management when they call and discuss discharge planning with you. So things to pack for your stay here at Oakleaf Hospital. Uh, there is a copy in the front of your binder. You're going to want to pack a copy of your ID and insurance card. Um, also comfortable clothing. Um, you'll be wearing clothing starting the morning after surgery and sometimes people even want to come up to the floor and put their comfy clothes on right away. Um, comfy clothes such as sweatpants, um, exercise shorts, um, nice loose fitting tops, um, socks, comfortable shoes that you can get it on and off easily. Uh, remember the clothes need to fit over a dressing, so no jeans. Um, sometimes right after surgery, you'll still have that bulky dressing on. So even like uh, tight yoga pants or leggings might be difficult to get onto or they might get a little stretched out. So just keep that in mind. Please, please, please wear your glasses, bring your hearing aids and your dentures. Um, it's very helpful after, sh after surgery um, for things that you'll need to do. Uh, like I said, make sure you wear clean, comfortable, uh, non-skid supportive shoes that are maybe easy to slip on and off or that have a good supportive back. We do have slipper slacks and robes here available at Oakleaf um, if for some reason you need to borrow either one of those. Um, so keep that in mind also. Other things to pack for your stay, please bring your crutches, walker, or personal care items. Personal care items such as a CPAP machine if you have sleep apnea, please do bring that in with you. Um, if you do not have the walker or crutches, you can always borrow the equipment from somebody you know, um, or you can rent that. Um, many people check with their county health department first to see if there is any equipment available for use there. There's also a um, information section in the back of your binder that goes over required and optional medical equipment that you would need after your specific surgery. There's a list of resources where you can purchase or rent these items located in your binder. Um, physical therapy does recommend a front wheeled walker. They don't recommend the Cadillac walker that has all four wheels and a nice seat and the brakes on it. Um, they recommend just one a plain old Jane front wheeled walker. Um, it's less of a fall hazard. Leave your valuables at home. Um, really no need for money, credit cards, or jewelry here at the hospital. One less thing we have to worry about misplacing. If you do have your advanced directive or living will, please bring that into the hospital with you. Um, and like I said, if you do need to have information on the advanced directive, let us know when you get here for your pre-op visit, or when you get here for pre-op, and we can get that information to you. There's a checklist on the front pocket of your handbook for easy reference when packing. Two days before surgery, you're going to take your first shower using the Start Clean Cleansing Kit. Um, everybody has received the cleansing kit in their green bag. Um, it has three sponges in there, one uh, container of solution, and it also has the piece of paper on here that kind of goes through how to take your shower and has checked when to start taking your shower. So the first shower is going to be two days before surgery. You will get in the shower, you're going to wash your hair, your face, your genitals like you normally would with your normal soap. Once that is done, you're going to take the first sponge and the first third of the solution and wash from head to toe, front and back, as best you can. Let that sit on your skin for 60 seconds and then rinse it off. You may need help with that, um, especially getting the back if you have a hard time doing that. Once you are done rinsing that off, you are going to dry with a clean towel and put on clean clothes. Um, no lotions or powders after um, you have done the first wash. Um, also, no shaving underarms or legs. Guys, it's okay to shave your face, but ladies, they don't want any arms or legs shaved. Um, so unfortunately, uh, you might come in a little hairy um, three to four days before surgery. 
helps increase your risk of infection. Um, if you have any issues with the solution, such as um, any allergic reactions, shortness of breath, um, difficulty breathing, swelling of the face, hives, or severe rash, let your surgeon know right away. Um, doesn't happen very often, but please let them know if it does. Your skin will get dry, so when you do come to this, the hospital, bring in any special lotion you like to use, um, and we'll get that on you as soon as we can up on the second floor. All right, now day before surgery, your physician and or pre-op nurse will have told you when to stop eating or drinking. Please follow those instructions. Um, like I said before, when you get that time, jot it down someplace you have it as a reference for yourself. This also includes no smoking, eating, chewing gum, um, or chewing tobacco. Um, nicotine, once again, causes constriction of blood vessels and slows your recovery period. Um, also, the day before surgery, you're going to take your second shower. So same thing as before, you're going to wash with your shampoo, your face, um, your hair, your genitals. After that's done, you're going to use a second sponge and the second third of the solution, and you're going to wash from chest down, front and back, let it sit on your skin for 60 seconds, rinse it off, and then dry off with a clean towel. Um, put clean clothes on, and once again, no lotions, powders, um, no shaving your legs. Um, at this point, too, the night before surgery, you're going to re remove any jewelry, body piercings, makeup. If you have acrylic nails, you want to have at least one nail that is free of the acrylic nail. And toenails, the doctors, the surgeons recommend um, having no toenail polish on your toenails either. Um, we use that to help monitor your oxygen level during surgery. Day of surgery, um, so the morning of surgery, you're going to take your third shower. Same thing, you're going to wash your face, your hair, your genitals with your normal soap and shampoo. And then you're going to use the last sponge with the last third of the solution. Same thing, from chest down, front and back. Let it sit on your skin for 60 seconds, and then you're going to rinse it off, and then dry off with a clean towel. And then um, most people put on their comfy clothes they're going to wear after surgery, they wear to the hospital. It's okay to brush your teeth that morning. Just remember not to swallow any water. It's okay to rinse and spit. Um, if you have any medications to take that morning that your family physician or surgeon have told you to take that morning, such as blood pressure meds or diabetic pills, um, please follow their instructions and take it with the smallest sip of water you possibly can. So once you arrive here at Oakleaf, we highly recommend arriving on time. Um, in some cases, weather can maybe cause lateness. Um, it can, if you're extremely late, it can result in moving your surgery to a later time. If you know that for some reason you are running late, maybe the weather is really bad, just give us a call here at Oakley. If you can call um, just our main number, 715-895-9551, and just let us know you're running late for whatever reason. Um, and we can let the pre-op area know. Um, once you get here to the hospital, you're going to come in through door three. You're going to register at our front desk, and then the pre-op nurse will come back and introduce herself and take you, the patient, back to our pre-op bay. Once you're back in the pre-op bay, uh, you'll change into a hospital gown. gown. Uh, they're going to apply compression stockings, and this is what compression stockings are. We'll be going through this a couple times. These are compression stockings. So if you're a knee, they'll be applied to your non-surgical leg. If you're a hip, they'll be applied to both legs. They'll also be um, going through your belongings, making sure they're placed in a secure location. Um, they will be eventually moved up to your inpatient room prior to your arriving. Uh, your pre-op nurse will also verify your medical and surgical history along with any allergies you have. They'll provide any further education about your surgery that you need, um, going through pain management and answering any further questions you may have. You'll also have an IV started along with any unnecessary labs drawn. Um, and then you'll receive a surgical site washing by the pre-op nurse to so that surgical site again. Um, once this is done, um, your surgeon most likely will have ordered a couple um, medications for you to take prior to surgery. The pre-op nurse will go over these meds with you and they'll have you take them with a very small sip of water. There's more information on the pre-op medications in your binder underneath, I believe it's called pre-op meds. Um, inf information in the binder includes information on these medications uh, along with side effects, why you're taking them, how they work, um, all that good stuff. Once this preparation is complete, 
the pre-op nurse will go get your family and friends that came with you and they can come back to the pre-op bay. Um, during this time, you'll be signing any necessary paperwork, such as consent for surgery. Um, there is a sample copy of the consent for surgery in your binder. Highly encourage you to read it prior to surgery, as the day of you're usually a little bit more nervous and maybe won't remember quite what you're signing. So definitely read it before you come in for surgery. Um, anesthesia is also going to come back and visit with you. They're going to discuss the different types of anesthesia available to you. Also in your binder, there is a description of the different types of anesthesia. Um, they will help you decide the day of which one is best for you. Um, once this is all done, your surgeon is going to stop by to see you in the pre-op bay. They're going to answer any further questions you have for your surgery. They're also going to mark the um, surgical site. X marks the spot, and this is just a safety measure to ensure the correct surgical site. Um, once this is all done, our surgery nurse will come back and you will say, goodbye to your family. They'll go back out to the family waiting room and you'll be um, wheeled back into our surgical bay. Once you um, enter the surgical bay, um, do not be surprised if you remember seeing quite a few people back there. Um, you might see your physician, physician's assistant, surgery techs, x-ray techs, anesthesia will be back there. Um, so don't be surprised if you remember seeing several people in the operating room to begin with. You may have robotic surgery, which depends upon your surgeon's decision as to the approach that is being used. Um, so there might be extra equipment in the room also. Your surgery generally lasts approximately two to three hours. Um, during that time, your family and friends will return to the main lobby and they'll be able to either sit in front of the fireplace, enjoy a meal at the bistro, have some coffee, a soda. Um, the surgeon highly encourages family and friends to not leave the hospital. Uh, while you're in surgery because the surgeon will come out and try and find them to tell you how the surgery went. Um, once the surgeon has talked to you, if you do need to run some errands or get out to go get some fresh air, more than welcome to, but just wait until he's had a chance to find you and talk to you. So here I have a couple different pictures of the different areas in the hospital. This is a picture of one of our pre-op bays. This is where you'll initially be coming through. We had talked about that already. This is one of our operating nurses taking somebody back to the surgical area. And then this is one of our state-of-the-art operating rooms. As you can tell, there is quite a bit of equipment in there. Here is the main lobby where your family is going to be hanging out, along with another picture of the main lobby and the bistro, where they will be able to, um, like I said, have a meal. Um, cup of coffee. We do provide one complimentary meal for one family member during the stay. They can choose to either do that here um, while you're having surgery or they can wait and have that meal with you after surgery. All right, so once you are done with surgery, you're going to be um, taken back to the recovery room. Um, surgery norm normally takes approximately two hours. The surgeon will come out and talk to the family while the physician's assistant and the anesthesiologist is still in the operating room with you. So I always like just to tell the family that once the surgeon sees you does not necessarily mean that you're in the recovery room. Um, recovery room, we usually say is approximately two hours. It might be a little less, depending on how things are going. Uh, when you wake up, you will wake up with oxygen, um, either in your nose or a mask. So here are the two examples. Um, this is the mask. It'll be covering your nose and it'll be uh, hooked up to supplemental oxygen just to kind of help um, give you a little extra boost after surgery, clear that anesthesia out of your lungs. Or you could have it hooked up through a nasal cannula. The nasal cannula, I know many of you have seen this, goes in your nose, around your ears, and that is also hooked up to supplemental oxygen. It gives you just a little extra boost after surgery. Don't be surprised if, surprised if you're gonna need oxygen on and off for the first 24 hours after surgery. There are no visitors allowed back in the recovery room. Um, your stay there is going to be brief. Um, you'll be hooked up to machines and they'll be making sure that you are comfortable, no nausea, no pain, um, making sure that you're ready to get up to the second floor inpatient unit so that your family and loved ones can be with you again. The recovery nurse will be updating your family um, while you are back in the recovery bay. Um, so, you know, if they are out the bistro, um, up out in the waiting room, you'll get an update. If you do need to run an errand, that's okay. We'll update you once they get to the floor. You may or may not remember your recovery experience, so don't be surprised if you do not remember it. 
This is a picture of a couple of our recovery room nurses. As you can see, there's quite a bit going on back there. That's why we don't have family go back to the recovery room. We have you hooked up to a heart monitor, blood pressure, you're getting fluids, all kinds of good stuff. And this is normally when we take a break here, um, if you're at the class. So if you need to pause your video right now and take a little stroll, feel free.